Hello, this is Tova from Trifold Productions with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you a technique that I use when it comes to uh, having cloth blown in the wind. You know, having a dress or loose clothing blowing in the wind. And I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about. Now, this is a scene that I'm working on for an animation that I'm working on. I've already done this scene. Let me press place and see what's going on. You can see that their clothing uh, their robes are moving in the wind because they're outside in the storm but you can see too that the upper part of the body is not or upper part of the cloth is not moving as much which is the reason for that uh, you want to avoid too much movement in loose clothing especially when it comes to layers or loose clothing to avoid the cloth intersecting in itself you can fix it by using a lattice but that's more a more a more advanced technique of cloth simulation in blender this technique i'm sure just for just for beginning it's just something simple to do now i've downloaded this um model from make human which is a free add-on or free program it's not an add-on it's a program but you can see that my model here is uh, wearing a pretty loose dress get my screencast keys on and another thing you want to you know keep in mind is that whenever you download um a model from make human it automatically hides the mesh that's underneath the clothing and sometimes in blender when you do that uh, the clothing sometimes ends up going through the whole body so what I've done is I've downloaded the mesh separately or the body mesh separately and downloaded the cloth mesh separately that way you have a whole model underneath the clothing what I mean by that is let me turn off the dress sorry for the um, x-rated stuff here but you can see the model is a complete model nothing is hidden and the dress is downloaded separately so that you can have a whole model mesh underneath the cloth mesh now the next thing you want to do is once you've done that you have your model imported into blender you want to click on your uh, clothing model and I've you know made a pretty loose dress or selected a pretty loose dress for uh, this technique so you can see how it actually works but you want to create a vertex group for your dress because we want to make the upper body upper part of it kind of uh, stiff and the lower part loose so we're going to go to let me see this triangular which is the object data properties let's click on that and we're going to click on our plus sign to add a vertex group to it I'm going to double click this and rename it let's call it dress enter and we're going to go to edit mode by pressing tab and we're going to press Z so we can see through our model because we want to select everything from the front to the back press B on the keyboard left click and drag and I'm just going to drag over this top part because I just want this top part selected because I want this bottom part the bottom part of her shirt or the her blouse and the bottom part of the dress to be pretty much free moving and I'm going to reduce the weight a little bit so it's not 100% and I'm going to click assign and I'm going to tab out of that mode and press Z to go back into object view and to see what we've done here let's go to weight paint mode by cl clicking on that uh, tab there and we're going to go down to weight paint you can see that uh, the top part is kind of an orange color if it's completely red that means it's 100% uh, weight painted when it goes got down to like blue yellow green that means it's, it becomes less and less affected by the weight and blue is no effect at all and we're gonna go back into object mode and we've named it dress because that's that's important just name it like I've always said once you're in blender it's good to just name everything name all your elements the models, the clothing, whatever you do in Blender, give it a name. You can keep so you can keep track of it. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our cloth simulation, which would be this tab here, Physics Properties. Let's click on that and click on Cloth. And we're going to select uh, a preset here. And this technique you can use in 2.7, any version of Blender that has a cloth simulation. But I'm using 2.0. Uh, 9 right now or 2.8 2.9 right now for this technique I'm gonna click on these three uh, lines here 
and these are presets and I'm going to click on silk because silk is the most I guess it's the most free-flowing when it comes to uh, cloth simulation rubber leather denim that's more rigid and cotton is somewhat rigid too but silk is very very free moving let's click on that and then we're going to scroll down let's kind of collapse all this because this is kind of much we're going to go down to shape let's click on that now this is where the vertex group that we just created is going to come in handy because we're going to pin pin this part of her clothing to pretty much her body so that this part really is a move going to click in that and since uh, the only vertex group that we created was dressed that's the only one that's going to appear so let's click on that and let's scroll down some more and leave all these parameters the way they are and let's click on collisions and we're going to go to self collisions and then we're going to click on this second vertex group because we want the cloth to intersect or interact with itself but not intersect with itself let's click on that space let's click on dress again now you can bake uh, these parameters or bake the clothing in the case. I don't know if this is called cache or cache. I'm just going to call it cache, you know, just for the sake of this tutorial to call it cache. Click on that and you can set the bake. That way, whenever you, you know, go into this scene again, it doesn't restart, recalculate the movement every time. Once it's baked, it's on it permanently, so you don't have to worry about, you know, it eating up your uh, processing power in your computer. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the animation of the model itself. Let me drag this down, scroll up, and we're going to click on collision. And we're going to leave these parameters the way they are. Don't have to touch this at all. Just leave it as it is. And then we're going to press Shift A on our keyboard. And we're going to click on, let me see, uh, force field and we're going to go to wind now it's going to appear where the cursor is which is at the bottom so we're going to click on our move gizmo I'm going to drag it over on the X axis left click and drag and drag it on the Z axis left click and drag oh okay that was unexpected <laughs> blender just crashed tough that's that's the first time that that's happened uh, but let me pause this and I'm just going to start off from where I stopped uh, initially that was really really strange but I think it's because of the string cast keys but it's fine I'll just start from where I stopped I'll, I'll be right back okay and we're back yeah I think what happened was that my screen cast the screen cast key software that I'm using is what probably shut it down uh, like I said before, I got to find a new one that actually works without affecting Blender at all. But as we st where we stopped was we created the wind by going to Shift A, and we so I'm going to keep my screencast keys off and just tell you the keys I'm pressing, and go to Force Field Wind, and that uh, puts the wind down at the bottom where the cursor is. Left click and drag on the X axis, and then left click and drag on the Z axis. We're going to rotate our uh, wind element on the Y axis by 90 degrees by pressing R, Y, and 90 on our keyboard. Enter. And then we're going to scale this up because we want the wind to affect her whole dress. So we're going to press S and just drag our mouse so that the the height of the wind element actually is equal to the height of her dress pretty much. And now we want the wind to affect be pretty strong on her dress so what we're going to do now is that we're going to go to the physics uh, properties and then strength let's crank this up to like 200 let's see what happens enter you can see that it's uh, pretty much well, it's really oh, that's a lot hopefully this works like it's supposed to work let's press one and then we're going to press play on our keyboard and see what happens you can see that the wind is blowing her dress and the upper part is not moving at all and that's what we want and this gives the impression that there's a lot of wind blowing on her attire now you can see that it looks when you zoom in here let's scroll up on our mouse we can see that it looks kind of rough and that's because of the uh, the division of the mesh it's not that much it's pretty low let me tab out of this let me stop this I go back to the beginning click on address and press tab you can see that the segments on her dress aren't as many uh, you can increase 
the segments by going to the modifier tab, which is this wrench, and click on add modifier and subdivision surface. But you have to keep in mind when it does that, it, it will make the appearance of her dress or whatever clothing is being, the wind is being applied to, it will make the ripples or the wrinkles look a lot better. But it's going to be taxing on your machine. And like I said before, there could be some intersection happening uh, with it. But a lattice system would help that. But this is just for beginners. That's why I mentioned in the beginning, keeping the upper part uh, stiff. And if you have uh, some kind of clothing that has a lot of layers on it, this technique also helps. If you keep parts of the layered clothing stiff and cause other parts to move, it gets, still gives you the appearance of, you know, your clothing being blown in the wind, which is what we're wanting here. So that's the technique that I use in Blender to get the effect of uh, the wind blowing clothing in Blender and keeping it pretty much simple. And you can see that it's doing it so effectively that the clothing isn't going through the mesh at all. And this avoids this. This causes you not to have used a lattice on your model. Uh, physical model or on the clothing mesh at all. So this is the, this is the uh, quick tip for today. Clothing being blown in the wind. So thank you guys who have been watching my tutorials and hopefully it has helped you. And thank you guys who will watch in the future. Thank you guys who have subscribed and who will subscribe in the future. And I will see you guys on the next one. Alright, adios.